Today's lesson, you guys, is on histograms and cumulative frequency graphs. So we reviewed what histograms are, but um, we got to talk about relative cumulative histograms now. Um, I have a definition for you up here. It's a running tally, and so what it does is it includes all of the tallies below that certain number up to a certain number. So I'll talk more about that when we get down to this example, but I just want to review a couple properties of histograms. So if we call something symmetric, think about that um, reflective line that means you can probably draw a line right down the middle and the left side matches the right side it could also look something like this it doesn't have to be a bell-shaped graph it could be a bimodal graph or there's a lot of other options but think about that line of symmetry that's what we're going to refer to as symmetric it's probably not ever going to be perfectly symmetric that's why in stats we usually use roughly symmetric approximately symmetric somewhat symmetric um, to refer to graphs that look like this skewed right and skewed left. Not sure if you guys have heard this before, but I have heard from some of my students that have learned stats, um, like when they were in Algebra 1, when they first learned what skewed right and skewed left was, they referred to their toes and what like their feet look like. So this is kind of weird, but keep in mind that the skewed right graph, the tail is on the right, meaning you have some potential outliers and like this tail here on the right hand side. If it's skewed left, that means that your tail is off to the left and maybe you have some low outliers here. Um, and so this is supposed to, I mean, this graph doesn't, but a skewed right graph kind of looks like your right foot. If you guys look down at your right foot right now, see how your pinky toe is like kind of tail trailing off to the right? And so that's what a skewed right graph looks like. And same thing with your left foot, your pinky toe is probably a little bit smaller than your big toe. And so your big toe represents like where the mode is and then your pinky toe is where the tail is. So your left foot is skewed left. So that's kind of another way to think about it if, in case that helps you. Um, a couple things about the mean versus the median when the graph is skewed. If the graph is skewed to the right, that means that you have some really high numbers increasing your mean. And that means that the mean is greater than the median. So um, something that we've talked about in the past, but I want to remind you of the mean is not resistant to extreme values. So we use that word not resistant. The median does re resist the effects of outliers and really extreme values, but the mean doesn't. So the mean is affected by it. So the mean is increased in a skewed right graph because all these right hand side numbers that are much bigger than all the rest are increasing the mean, but not increasing the median. So on the um, same thought, if a graph is skewed left, that means you have some small numbers that are decreasing your mean. That means your mean is going to be less than your median. What if the graph is symmetric? So what if it looks something like this? That means that your mean and your median are going to be approximately the same. Um, keep in mind that it's probably not ever going to be exactly the same. Um, but approximately means pretty close. So what does pretty close mean? It's kind of a judgment call. It depends on all the rest of the data. Um, but just keep in mind that it's probably going to be pretty similar if the graph is roughly symmetric. Okay, so let's get down to this example here about the presidents. Um, did you know that Trump was the oldest president ever to be inaugurated? And he is in this 70 to 75 class. So remember, I'm using this vocab word here, class. And that just means how am I designating my bars when I make my histogram? Because I am going to make a histogram of this. Apparently, there were two presidents in the history of all 45 presidents, including Trump, that were between 40 and 45, the young guys, when they were um, inaugurated. And so what I'm going to do over here, um, this is kind of like what our lesson was over yesterday, but if I want to do a cumulative frequency here, the total number of presidents that are less than 45 years old when they were inaugurated is 2. But how do I do the next column? If there are two presidents in this class and there are seven presidents in this class, that means that two plus seven is nine. There are nine presidents total that are 50 years old or younger. Okay, so two plus seven. That means there are nine total presidents younger than 50. And I'm going to keep adding the previous tallies to my next number. And so I'm going to take my nine and I'm going to add the 13 here, and that gives me 22. Now I'm taking the 22, and I'm adding the 12 new presidents to the categories, and that gives me 34. Then I'm starting with 34 presidents, and the 34 presidents are all of these, and then I'm adding another 7 to them as I'm moving my way down the table. So that gives me 41. 
I'm taking my 41 presidents and adding 3, which gives me 44. I'm taking my 44 presidents and adding Donald Trump, and that gives me 45 total. And that's going to be my cumulative frequency um, tally in this table. And so it does tell me to um, create a cumulative hel hist frequency histogram. Excuse me. I'm going to actually do that off to the side. I didn't give too much room, but it's okay because we already know how to graph histograms. What I'm going to do is make my classes down here. My youngest presidents were between, I'm going to start it not at zero. They were between 40 and 45. And I'm going to work my way up. And I'm going to label my x-axis. So I went ahead and labeled my y-axis also. Um, I divided my classes up. My youngest presidents were in the 40 to 45 class. My oldest president, Donald Trump, is in the 70 to 75 class. And I do have um, my running total. There were 45 presidents total. And so one of my y-axis numbers goes all the way up to 45. So I just incremented these by fives. And now I'm going to start graphing. So my 40 to 45 category had two presidents in it. So very small bar. It's a good idea to label it with the number that it represents. Between 50 and under was 2 plus 7, which was 9, so almost up to 10. Uh, I can zoom out a little bit here. My next number was 22 followed by 34. So in 50 to 55 was 22 presidents. And then 34 presidents in the 55 to 60. My last couple were 41 and 44 and then 45. So 41, it would be a good idea to try and use your side of your ID or something maybe if you were creating this for a quiz or a test just so it looks a little bit nicer than mine. But um, here is what my cumulative relative frequency graph looks like. So this is age at inauguration, and this is the tally, but it is cumulative. So a good idea to make sure that it is labeled cumulative. I put cumul for an abbreviation, um, tally. And so just remember that the difference between the histograms we did yesterday and what this histogram looks like is that, for example, this 22 here means that there are 22 presidents that were 50, younger than 55, period. So that includes all of these. Okay, so that's how we're going to construct our cumulative histogram. And now let's answer a couple questions here. Um, what do I notice about the cumulative frequency for 70 to 75 years? So this... It equals 45, and that's what I want you guys to notice, is it equals 45, and that is the total number of presidents, and that's always how it's going to be. It represents the total number of presidents because all 45 of the presidents the United States have had have been 75 years or younger. And so that is what um, that 45 means. Um, the next thing I want you to do is what if I would have graphed cumulative proportions? So I haven't filled out this part yet. And what the difference between a frequency and a proportion is, is a frequency is a tally. These are whole numbers, counts. They represent numbers of presidents. A proportion just represents a percentage, but it's a fraction written as a decimal. And so there are two presidents out of 45 in my very first class. So that's why I'm going to write two out of 45 here, which equals 0 0.044. Um, the next one is 9 out of 45. That's exactly 1 fifth, which is 0.2. The next one was 22 out of 45, just shy of 50%, at exactly 0.489. Then I've got 34 out of 45, and I'm just going to complete my table. And so here's what that table all completed looks like. And the other thing I want you guys to notice is that this last proportion is 1, represents 100%, because all 100% of the presidents were age 75 or younger here. Um, and so the only thing that I want you to note is if I were graphing these proportions instead of these tallies, what would the difference be? My graph would look exactly the same. Um, it would have the same shape, the same classes, 
um, all of these bars would be the same height, but these would not be counts. These would be percentages. And all the way up here would represent 100%. So it's only the y-axis that would change. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to write that. And so remember, only the y-axis would change. Everything else would look pretty much the same. Instead of frequencies, which are whole numbers or tallies, that's all of these numbers up here. Instead of having those along the y-axis, we would have all of these proportions. And again, it would stop at 1 um, because that represents 100%. And so last thing is, what would it mean if two bars were equal height? And so what that would look like is, for example, let's just say that I had a slight... Um, I just went from 50 to 55 to 60. And let's say there were 10 presidents in here, and there were also only 10 presidents in here. What that would mean, there were no new presidents, presidents in the 55 to 60 class, I'm using that vocab word class, um, to increase the cumulative frequency. Cumul. And so if two bars were equal height, that would mean that there were a certain number of presidents in here and the same exact number stayed here. That would mean that there were no new ones in this class to increase that tally. And so if there were 10 presidents that were 55 or younger, that would mean those same 10 presidents are also younger than 60. But it wouldn't be like 11 presidents, meaning there is not a new president in this, in this group to join the tally. So if two bars are equal height, that just means that there is no increase. That's another good way to think about it. So no, no increase. Okay? And so those are a couple uh, basic things that I wanted to talk to you about cumulative frequency graphs. Um, we are going to do some practice in class tomorrow and expand a little bit. So keep that in mind and bring your questions. And thank you for watching. Have a great night.